Allison's arc in season two might be my absolute favorite of season two. Yeah. And really just the growth from season one through the second season is something else. So when did you first learn what was going to happen with the character in season two? Did you already know by the time that they yeah. pitched the, the role to you originally? Yeah. So I think, I think when we ended, you know, I think our Netflix producers l were so, were just like so hype on the first season mm -hmm. that I think, you know, they were already having conversations about a second season and kind of, you know, w beginning those talks of like, okay, if we did a second season, like, what would it be about? And where do we go from here? We've like, this season is so good. Like, how are we going to top that? And so I think we all kind of left the first season with like knowing not that we were getting a second season, but knowing that like if we did, Steve, our showrunner, was really interested in following the the graphic novels in the sense of like having Dallas be a part of it and the JFK assassination. And so for me, I just was like, great, that's dope. However, you have now cast a black woman as Allison, which is amazing. But then you it it it, it is impossible for us not to address the fact that if they go back to the sixties, you will be throwing Allison into the segregated South as a black woman. And, and what that, that ha will shape, if not be her entire storyline for the season of like what that is. And, and that is something that she will not have in common with the rest of her siblings. And that is something that she will be in. She will be alone in that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so you know, I think I I definitely knew. And then when the second season, you know, got announced and, and they started the writer's room and they started writing, you know, it, it, I think the conversation was like, how far are we going to go into this? And how is Allison going to be involved? And how much is she going to be involved? And, and what does that mean? And also like, you know, is she going to have her powers back? And if she does, is she going to use them? Um, and so I, it was a huge, it was a huge conversation. I know for, for the writer's room and, and Steve of, of how, how deep Allison was going to be in the movement. Um, and I think, you know, the couple conversations that him and I had about it in the beginning, I just was like, I think we're doing a huge disservice if we do not take that as an opportunity to like really just have her, you know, ingratiate herself in this movement and 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 become a part of a, a part of it and, and take that as an opportunity um, um, for our show and for this platform that we have. Um, and so, yeah, I think I was I was nervous as hell to, you know, tackle something like the civil rights movement, such a, like a monumental um, period of time for the African-American experience and America in general. Um, but, and I also think, you know, but I was also honored to have that opportunity and to, in and, you know, when I auditioned for the show, never in a million years did I think Allison would be like taking on the civil rights movement, you know what I mean? In any season of the show, it just was not remotely on my mind of like tackling social injustice and, and systemic racism and that being a part of this show. And also, you know, this, El, you know, Ellen, Ellen through Vanya's character is, is, is coming head to head with, you know, the LGBTQ, um, you know, experience in, of that time, which was still considered illegal and a mental illness. And, you know, we're taking on some really b bold and we've always kind of been tackling Klaus and his mental health and, 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 you know, his drug addiction and, and that kind of thing. So I think, you know, it's just, there's some heavy hitting topics this season. And I think, you know, we were all really excited, but all very, 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 you know, um, opinionated on wanting to get it right and 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 deal with all of these things and depict them only with respect. Yeah, you you guys definitely kind of run away with doing that. I mean, a Allison in particular is just so inspiring how she gets involved in the movement, even though she is well aware that, you know, by 2019, nothing's been solved. And the fact that she still right. has that choice to commit and see it through is just, I don't know, yeah. my, heart, my heart was going to explode. I'm no. gonna, I'm gonna put the the spoiler warning up for season two right now because I wanted to stick with this topic a little more and let you discuss it. Yeah. further. But I don't know what you know about season three yet. But with everything she does with the civil rights movement in season two, how are you hoping that they kind of hold on to that and let her bring that to a new timeline? Yeah. You know, I think I think the lessons that Allison is taking away 
um, from this second season are immense. I think she is, we're seeing a really new Allison. We're seeing, we're seeing an Allison that is kind of has like stripped of all of her crutches and her vices. And, 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 you know, she's, she's kind of coming from a place of, 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 of abusing her power and, and using them for selfish reasons and, and is at a, a real low and is riddled with like regret and guilt and kind of looking at a life that outside of her daughter feels meaningless and 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 superficial and and so i think the allison that we meet in the second season is is you know she's had to scale it all the way back she's had to she's had to you know she doesn't have her power she doesn't have her family she doesn't have you know the notoriety and the fame and the career and she doesn't know where claire is um and so i think you know, she, because she doesn't have her power, she's had to, she'd had to be observant and she's had to listen and she's had to slow things down and she's had to approach the world in a new way on top of being in the middle of the segregated South, in the middle of this movement. And, and, and I think she's, we're finding her, she's, she's finding this new self-worth that I think is, is really beautiful to kind of watch. And I think for the first time in her life, she's like looking in the mirror and actually like liking that reflection, because I think she knows that everything she has now she's worked for, and she has a community that supports her and has a community that, that loves her and has found a man that loves her without all of the things that made her lovable. Um, and so I think, you know, I think those are huge lessons. And I think the biggest one also is that like, she doesn't need her power to be powerful. And I think that is, I think that is how she has approached everything in her life up until this point that she's like, I'm powerful because I have powers. But I think this season she's learning the power that is in her actual voice and the message that she wants to, to carry and, and pass on and the, and the, the fight that she, the fights that she wants to fight and, and, and the, you know, whatever it is that she wants to take on. I think she's starting to learn that, you know, she doesn't need her powers to do that. And so I think going into a third season, I mean, if we did, it would be amazing to kind of see how that manifests when they're, you know, seemingly back in their normal timeline, if they are. And mm -hmm. I think um, it would be such a disservice to not kind of take the lessons that she's been learning this season and translate that to, to another season. And also, um, you know, and also I think it would be really interesting to watch her, and educational and, 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 and informative for her to deal with the traumas of this past season, because it's not really, you know, we don't really see, we, you know, we, in her landing scene, we see her get chased by the men and, and run into the beauty salon and then like kind of start her journey there. But at the end of the day, if you like, if, you know, I think she is, she, for three years, she is in like survival mode. You know what I mean? I think for three years, she is, she is, having to normalize the violence that she's seeing in the street and normalize the whites only signs and normalize these things that, you know, she's coming from a place where those didn't exist. I'm not saying she didn't know about them. And I'm not saying she didn't face prejudice and racism and, and microaggressions. Obviously there's no doubt that she did, but like the level of which they are at in the time that they are in has got to affect her and it is trauma and there's, tr there's going to be trauma there. And so I would love to actually like explore her mental health having mm -hmm. essentially lived through these these three years of, of of you know obviously there were beautiful moments and and relationships that she's walking away from with love and and she's kind of this new person but i also think like she's had to be strong for so long mm -hmm.